cable again. Hi, I'm Robert Hull, and to have your guitar cable go out on you in the middle of a solo is one of the worst things imaginable. I have Brian's guitar cable right here. But instead of fixing this one, we're going to make him a much better one. I'm going to show you how to make a professional quality cable with very reliable components for a fraction of the cost. But before we get started, let's talk a little bit about safety. You want to wear safety goggles to protect your eyes while soldering. Also make sure that you have good ventilation to remove any dangerous fumes. You will be working around lead, so it is important that you do not eat or drink around your workstation and that you wash your hands often. Finally, make sure that you wear appropriate clothing, no shorts or open-toed shoes. What I have here is I have a cable that sells for $150 for about 20 feet. It's, uh, it's got Amphenol connectors on it. It's got the expandable sleeving over the cabling. It's got really good heat shrink uh, at each end of the connector. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a replica of this for a fraction of the cost. For this project, we're going to use a couple of items. I'm going to use a Mogami high quality uh, instrument cable. It's uh, six millimeter wide. It's got two shields. It has a spiral wound copper shield on the outside and a polymer, carbon impregnated polymer shield on the inside to make sure that there's no noise that gets into the cable. The center conductor is 20 gauge wire, stranded wire, very, very strong. The entire thing is heat resistant so it makes soldering really well. The second item we have is a Texflex. Our, this right here is expandable sleeving. Uh, it goes over the cabling. It's 26 feet of this will go to 20 feet of the instrument cable uh, and then Brian picked the Patriot coloring. The next item is our Amphenol connectors. There's four pieces to it. Uh, I got a back shell, I have the, the body, I have the tip, the cable clamp. Uh, last item is the heat shrink. I got various colors here. Uh, I think Brian picked the clear and all these are available at TubeDepot.com. It's goggle time. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our cable and a small pocket knife and you're going to split the cable. Uh, slowly turn it in your fingers. While you're doing it, you're slicing gently into the outer insulation. Once you've got it sliced, you'll bend it over. Now you don't want to slice all the way down and cut the shield underneath. So there'll be pieces where the plastic is still connected. Slowly slice it and put it to the side. The next one you're going to unfold that spiral shield. We talked about two shields here. So this is the first shield. We're going to pull that spiral shield off and then we're going to twist it in our fingers because we're going to solder to that actual piece. Here I am twisting it up. Now we're going to cut off that second shield. That plastic, you see that black plastic is the second shield. That's a carbon impregnated polymer shield that reduces the noise of the cable moving as well as rejects more outside noise. Again, you're going to slice slowly around it very gently just so you can slice into it. You don't want to go too deep because you'll, you don't want to cut the center conductor a center um, dielectric. Once you got it, once you got it uh, cut all the way around, you're going to skin it down the whole length. And the reason to do that is it's a very fragile, fragile plastic. And what I found is easy is once I've skinned it like that, I can grab my fingernail and it'll pull right off, which is great. It'll save you a lot of time. All right, now that I've got my shield and I have my center dielectric and my center conductor, I'm going to take my wire strippers and I'm going to cut just prior to my slice around that polymer shield. You don't want it, that polymer shield, that plastic shield to touch your center conductor or uh, you'll, sh you'll short it out. I'm going to slowly cut around it, again, try not to cut the center conductor and I'm going to pull a little bit and there it is coming off and I'm going to slide off my center conductor having not cut any of the the in inside wires and I'm going to twist this gently so I have one giant conductor. Now we're ready to tin it. I'm going to take my cabling, I'm going to take a little bit of my magic solder fluid and I'm going to just a drop on my center conductor and let it flow down all the way down the conductor. This is Rob's secret one-handed soldering technique. Uh, it's v if you haven't got something to hold your cabling while you're soldering, here's a great way to do it. I'm going to come over here, I'm going to put a little bit of solder on my soldering iron. And you can see a little drop of solder on there. And I'm going to go on my center conductor, I'm going to go up, and then I'm going to come back down again. Now, because I put the flux on there, it flowed into the connection, it flowed into the, uh, the cabling very easily. Now I've got the flux on my shield as well, a little bead of solder on there. 
I'm going to go down and you can see it just drip away. And now I have, I have tinned my cabling. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to solder the cable to our connector. I'm going to take my connector here, this Amphenol connector, and put it in my Panavice. Panavice, great item. Uh, now it's going to hold my, my connector without me getting burnt. I'm going to take my, uh, my cabling that I've already tinned. I'm going to cut off a little bit of the excess. I'm going to lay in one piece in here, measure how the distance is to get into, the, into that center conductor. I'm going to cut off the excess and I'm going to lay it in there. I'm going to take my solder flux and I'm going to put a drop of it. Again, we're going to do that one-handed, secret one-handed soldering technique. <clears throat> put in a little bit of solder flux, put a bead of solder, not a whole bunch of solder, and take a whole bunch, and lay it in there and let it soak in. Make sure it gets, soaks in there pretty good. Should only take about three seconds. There, now I've got that connected. That's the center conductor. Now I'm going to take a little bit more flux. I'm going to put it around the bottom where the shield is connecting to the the conductor, the connector, and I'm going to, this time I'm going to feed the solder into it because it's already being held with the center conductor. Don't do it too long. Thankfully this is some good cabling so it resists heat real well. I'm putting the soldering iron underneath it as well to pull some of the solder away. <clears throat> now you've got this large piece of shield hanging out the bottom which is not a problem because now we're going to cut it off. I'm just going to take our shear cutters uh, and cut it straight off. Undo the Panavice, and there is our connector. Now we're going to put on our TechFlex. We're going to take the Patriot, which is what Brian picked. We're going to start applying it from the other end. We're going to start sliding it in, sliding it on there. Okay, here's how it's going to look when I finally get to the end. It's going to spread out a little bit, but that's okay. The next item to put on here will be the cable clamp. And you want to put it on that direction. And you see how that is? That'll fit all the way down. Now that I'm going to put on my back shell, I'm going to slide the heat shrink onto the cable, onto the sleeving. I'm going to take right here and slide it on. Take my connector, take the back shell first, slide my sleeving into the back shell. Squeeze it on. Next will be the cable clamp. Squeeze it on. And then we'll take it. Again, I'm going to trim right where the cable starts at. Cable clamp. One way. Okay, now then, oh, wow, that is so tight, <laughs> that is great. All right, last one, put the back shell on, oh, wow, <laughs> that is awesome. All right, here's our heat shrink. For the completion of this project, we're going to use a heat gun. This is the younger 1095 available also at TubeDepot.com. I've got my heat shrink. I'm going to put it right up over the end of this black part of that connector. And I want it to sit right there because I want it to melt, to soak into it, to shrink up to it. Now, before I start this, <clears throat> the TechFlex is heat resistant, but the soldering iron, the, so the heat gun puts out a lot of heat. So you got to be very careful when you get down near the bottom that you don't melt the TechFlex. I'm, I'm going to use the lower setting on this. And you'll start to see it as it starts to heat, to shrink up. There it is. I'm just going back and forth. Just a little bit of heat. Not too much. All right. Here's that one connector. Wow. <laughs> that looks good. Next connector. Same thing. I want to put it right up there to the, to the rubber part. That's past rubber part. I'm on the low heat. go. That is a completed cable. With truly some of the, the best quarter inches, quarter inch connectors I have ever seen on some of the best cabling I've ever seen. 
this is a cable that will last anyone a long amount of time. You can take this out, play it, and not have to worry about it breaking on you when you're playing in the middle of your solo. All right, Brian, I have your cable. Brian, I'm glad that worked for you. I hope this also worked for you. The next time we see each other, we'll talk about fixing those old cables you have with those Switchcraft connectors. Until then, thank you very much for watching.